from you. And we get awfully bored just sitting around doing nothing. So call in and be a part of the show. The number is 972-925-3123. Take a picture, write it down, just give us a call. Number two, when you do call in, step away from the television. It really hurts our ears and it sends off a really bad tone. See what I mean? So, when you call in, step away from the television. I thank you, our host thank you, and our ears definitely thank you. And another thing, when calling into the show, please do not use cell phones. Cell phones do not work too well with our audio system here in the studio. They give off a really bad signal and we have a hard time hearing what you're saying. So remember, no cell phones. Another thing that we want all of you out there watching to know is that you could be on TV. That's right, your face could be on the tube. Send us a picture, whether it be an individual photo or a photo of your entire class. We'd love to see you, and so would everyone else out there watching. Either mail it to us through interdepartmental mail at DISD Box 379, or drop us a line at calculate this at DallasISD.org. Well, it looks like it's just about time for the show to get started, so I have to say goodbye. But don't forget to call in for your chance to win all sorts of cool prizes. So get set for an all new edition of Calculate This! And welcome back to another episode of Calculate This, where we're saving the world one number at a time. I'm Jocelyn Hepburn, lead math teacher for the Dallas Independent School District. Hi, I'm Jimmy Guillory, and I'm a lead math teacher coach for DISD. Please be sure to call in today for a chance to win an educational prize and also a fun prize. Good luck. The number to call is 972-925-3123. So let's get started. Now today we're going to continue with our study of Tax Objective 4, which says the student will demonstrate an understanding of concepts and uses of measurement. In Tax Objective 4, it includes perimeter, which is the distance around a, a figure, circumference, which is the distance around a circle, so it's the same thing as perimeter, only it deals with circles, Area, which is the number of square units inside a figure. Surface area, which is the sum of the areas of the faces of a figure. And volume, the number of cubic units needed to fill the space inside the figure. Now hopefully we have some 8th grade students calling in today. And if we don't, we're going to have 7th grade students work some of these 8th grade uh, problems that we have. I think they can handle it. I think but they can. But before we get started, okay. let me just uh, add this. For all of our viewers who are experiencing uh, audio difficulties, please turn your televisions to channel 12B and you know you might clear that up, okay? Right. I think they were on 9B before, it's so switch correct. it to 12B and it might be a little bit clearer. Okay. Okay. We do have a call on the line. Oh, we good. have uh, Keyshawn. Hello? Hello? Keyshawn? Yes. How are you doing? What school are you calling from? Good middle school. Okay, All right, good. Here. Okay, who's there in the room with you? Uh, Mr. Baxter and Mr. Trammell. Mr. Okay. Baxter and Mr. Trammell. Hey, Mr. Hey. Baxter, those are my good friends. Yeah, I'll see y'all on are. Thursday. Okay. Uh, and what, what grade are you in? Seventh. Seventh grade. Who's your teacher? Mr. Baxter. Mr. Baxter. Good, good. And Mr. Baxter, I'm going to try to remember to bring those fraction circles to you that you asked for some time ago, and every week I forget to bring them. Okay. I'm going to try to remember, Jim. Okay. Jim told me help. that you asked yeah, about them. Okay, I'm going to try to remember, okay? okay? But let's go to a problem, okay? We have a seventh grader here, okay? Okay, Keyshawn, your problem says, what is the perimeter of a rectangular room whose length is 25 feet and whose width is 18 feet? And Keyshawn, this problem is a measurement problem. And before we get started, let me read the um, text for you. It's 7.9. And 7.9 says that the student is expected to ex uh, estimate measurements and solve application problems involving length. And that includes perimeter 
and circumference, area and volume. Okay, Keyshawn? Okay. All right. Okay, Keyshawn, we have a rectangle here. We, it says that the perimeter of this rectangle has, uh, or, or it's actually asking, what is the perimeter of the rectangle? But it tells us that the, per, that the length of the rectangle is 25 feet and the width is 18 feet. What's the first thing we need to do here? Uh, add up, like, put 25 at the bottom, like, okay. and 25 at the top. Okay. And 25 at the top. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. I only see 125 right here. Why am I putting 25 at the top also? Because the sides are the same. Okay, I'm sorry? Because the sides are the same. Okay, can you speak up just a little bit? Is it my audio? Can you hear? Yes, yes. I can. You might want to move away from your television screen because we're getting a little feedback noise, Keyshawn, please. Okay. Okay, I think it was, it was also my audio. <laughs> okay. So you said put it at the top because what? The sides are the same. Like Absolutely. Opposite sides of a uh, rectangle are congruent. So I'll put 25 feet there. Now I'm ready to find the perimeter, right? No. Oh, okay. What else do I need to do? You have to put 18 feet on each side. Oh, okay. And, and I guess that would be for the same reason because those are opposite sides as well? Yes. Okay. Now, that must be my perimeter. No, you have to add all the sides up. Oh, okay. Okay, well, help me add this. Okay, 25 plus 25 is 50. Okay. And then I got 18 plus 18 is 36. Okay. And then I did 50 plus 36 equals 86. Very good. Very good. And you know what? Uh, do you have your formula chart with you? Yes, ma'am. Okay, let's look at the formula for uh, uh, perimeter of a rectangle. I lost my train of thought for a second there. I think what he did was actually this formula here. He said the length times 2, 25 plus 25 is 2 times 25. The width times 2, 18 plus 18 is 2 times 18, and then added those together. So that definitely works. Okay, thank you so much for calling, Keyshawn. Great yeah. job, Keyshawn. Excellent job. Excellent job. Okay, well, we do have another caller. Oh, good. We have uh, Sandra. Sandra's calling from Griner, I think. Okay. Sandra? Yes. Hi, how are you doing today? Fine. Well, great. What grade are you in, Sandra? Seventh. Seventh okay. grade. And who's your teacher there at Griner? Who is yeah. your teacher? Miss Enriquez. Miss Enriquez. Oh, that's my good friend, Miss Enriquez. Tell Miss Enriquez to say hello. Okay. And who's there in the room with you? Mr. Islas. Hi, Mr. Islas. I just knew it was my good friend, Mr. Islas, from W.E. Grider, No School Finer. Y'all thought I forgot, didn't you? Uh, hello, Mr. Islas. Good to see, to hear from you. I don't see you, but it's good to hear from you. Miss Miss Calvin says hello. Oh, Miss Calvin, the media. Miss Calvin. Oh, hey, Miss Calvin. Hi. That's my good friend, Miss Calvin. I got to meet her. How also. you doing, Miss Calvin? Okay. Who else is there in the library with you? She's actually looking good. Oh, oh good. Good. Thank you, Miss Calvin. <laughs> Anybody else there in the library? No. Oh, okay. Okay. I just want to make sure I speak to all my friends. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have a seventh grader here, and we have a problem. I know, you know, Griner, I, that, that's no schools for finer, so I'm going to put a doozy up for this one. Okay, Sandra, this is still measurement, and were you listening earlier when we talked about the text? Sandra, on measurement? Yes. Because it's still uh, text 7.9a. Okay. So your problem says the base of a rectangular prism is four feet by three feet. If the volume of the prism is 84 cubic feet, what is the height of the prism? Okay? Okay. Okay, let's talk uh, for a second about what exactly that's talking about. Okay, that's actually what that's saying is, and you know, I get a chance to play with my toys for a second here, so I'm always excited about that, yeah. Jim. Sandra, she's going to use the toys now, <laughs> so she likes that. <laughs> what that's saying is I have a rectangular prism, which is simply a box, and that box measures four feet by three feet. Now, of course, this one doesn't measure that, but we're going to pretend. And so, and it's saying that uh, that's what the bottom is, and it's saying that it takes 84 cubes, and this is a cube here, to fill that box up. Now, if it's four by three, how many cubes would be at the bottom of that box? If it's a four by three. Twelve. 
there would be 12 cubes at the bottom of that box. Now what it's asking is, I'm going to have a, a, a layer of 12 cubes, then it's going to start going up. It's going to start going up after that point. How many, uh, how many levels up is what I'm trying to say. I'm losing all my words today for some reason. But how many levels up will I go in order to get 84 cubes? So let's first look at our formula chart, because I know you have your formula chart there. And let's look for the formula for volume of a rectangular prism. And what is the formula for volume of a rectangular prism? Volume equal length times width times height. Okay, length times width times height. Now, at, uh, in uh, eighth grade, it would just have this second uh, formula. Volume equals capital B times H. And it says here that that capital B represents the area of the base of a solid figure. In this case, we already said that the area of our base would be 12. So it's 12 times our height gives us our volume, which is 84. Now, how can we solve that? Divide, divide, um, 84 divided by 12. Okay, so we're going to divide that 12 into both sides. And so our height is, let's see, I don't, do you know that off the top of your head? I don't. It's 7. Oh, okay. See, she's so much smarter than I am. 7 times 2, 4 to, oh, you know what? And she's absolutely right. So it goes 7, that's a 0 there. You hold the paper. So it goes 7 times. So what is the height of my prism? B seven feet. Absolutely correct. Very good, Sandra. Thank, Thank you, Sandra. You're job. welcome. All right. Excellent Bye. job. Bye. 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 Whoa. I'll just to point out on that problem. <laughs> okay. Uh, I know Sandra's already had it, but we're going to talk to the people in TV. <laughs> and if you notice on that problem, the unit there was feet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because we were asking for the height. If we okay. go back to the problem now. Go back now. to the problem. They like the way we look, Jim. They don't want to go back to the problem. Thank just, you. Just pointing that out, when Sandra said that the uh, height there was seven feet, mm -hmm. we noticed that that unit there is feet, not with any kind of exponent exactly, uh, that really is exponent of one, but mm -hmm. we don't have to show it. Right. So when we're looking for the height of something, it's, uh, I guess, one dimensional. We That's right. Say. That's so right. One All we're looking for is the height, yes. not the volume. If it were volume, it would have that three exponent. Exactly. But we're only looking. That's a good point to yes. point out. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure you understand what the question is. And in this case, it's what is the height. I was at a school the other day, and they have the students actually find, underline what it is you're trying to find. And I think that's an excellent strategy to yes, use. Yes, I do too. Great job, though. Sandra. We good do job. have another call on the line. Oh, we have good. Taylor on the line. Oh, I know this. I know Taylor. Hey, Taylor. Hey. This is Taylor from Brown. Yes. Okay, and, and Taylor, you know what? We were supposed to deliver that gift. I was going to make sure I looked you up, but we didn't get a chance to go to Brown the other day. We had to send it by someone else. <laughs> but the next time a gift goes to Brown Middle School, I'm looking you up. Okay? Okay. All right. This is my good friend Taylor. Taylor, I think you can do an eighth grade problem. What do you think? Yes. Okay, Taylor's ready. You see, she was hoping I would say that. Ah, I want to find a good one. I want to find a good Oh, I like this one. that's nice. Taylor, you getting nervous? No. <laughs> Taylor said, oh, no, you can't scare me. This is Taylor. Okay. Okay, Taylor, let's look at your problem. And you're seventh grader, but we're going to give you this eighth grade problem. It says, what is the height of a cylinder that has a radius of four meters and a volume of 351 and 68 hundredths meters cubed? Okay? Okay. And before we get started on that one, let's just read the uh, text there. It is 8.8b, and I need to put on my glasses to make sure that I read that. Okay. The student is expected to connect models to formulas for volume of prisms, cylinders, pyramids, and cones. Okay? Okay. All right, Taylor. Okay, now here's our formula chart. And I know you have your formula chart there in the room with you, right? Yes. Yeah. Good. Of course, if you were in the eighth grade, this, would, this is all you would have. Volume equals capital B times height. And that capital B, of course, represents, always represents the area of the base of the solid figure. In a cylinder, what shape is the base? Circle. It's a circle. And of course, I get to bring out another toy. Okay. Here's my toy. And see, the base is in green here. 
and it is a circle. How do we find area of a circle? Uh. What's the formula for area of a circle? You can look at your formula chart. Use your formula chart. Uh, it is area equals. <coughs> uh, 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 area equals times radius to second power. Absolutely. And if you look here in the formula for cylinder, that pi times radius squared is right here in your formula for cylinder because that capital B is simply area of the base. So you take that part of your formula, you take that formula, pi times radius squared, and you put that into the formula for volume, and you say pi times radius squared, and then multiply that times the height of the cylinder. And I illustrated that with my box. I'm going to play with my toys a lot. If I were to, uh, I could actually illustrate it with my cylinder also. If I were to take my cubes and fill this cylinder up, the bottom would fill up first, and it's a circle, so it would be the same as the area of that circle, and then it would start going up, filling up. And so it would be how high or how many layers high it would, it would take. Now, in this particular problem, they give us the radius, and they give us, and I'm going to underline that, the volume. So I'm going to fit that into my formula. Okay? Okay. I need some room here. So instead of V for volume, I'm going to put 351 and 68 hundredths equals. Now, what do we usually use for pi? Uh, 3.4. 3.14. Now, it didn't say approximately, so I'm going to have to use that 3.14. Now, it said the radius is 4, and my formula tells me to square that 4, or that radius. So it's going to be times 4 squared times the height, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, tell me what is the first thing I should do? Uh, you should first multiply um, your radius by, the, by itself. Absolutely. Order of operations tells us if we have an exponent, we, we uh, simplify that exponent first. So I'm going to bring this down and say 3.14. What is 4 squared equal to? Uh, 6 no, yeah, 16. 16. Now, what's my next step going to be? Uh, multiply 16 by 3.14. Okay, let's multiply that. You know that what that is off the top of your head? No. I know I don't either, so... <laughs> 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 uh, okay, I can't even write 16, let alone try to multiply it in my head. Okay, 6 times 4? 20. 4. 24. Okay, 6 times 1? 6. Plus 2? 8. Six times three? Eighteen. Okay, then I'm going to annex that zero. I know y'all hate to do it, but I'm going to do it. One times four? Four. One Excellent. times one? One. One times three? Three. Then I'm going to add that. So that gives me... Of course, I have to put my decimal, right? Yep, 50.24. Absolutely. 50 so, is 2400. Exactly. That's right. So that must be my answer, right? No. Ah, oh, because what do I still have to do? Find your height. I have to find my height. In other words, I have to figure out what times 50 and 2400 equals 351 and 6800. How can I figure that out? Multiply 351 and 6800 by 50 and 2400. You said divide, right? Yes. I thought that's what you said. Okay, 351 and 68 hundredths divided by, and I'm going to divide both sides, right? Mm-hmm. That's a decimal there. By 50 and 24 hundredths. Well, this is a lot of work, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But you know what? We have all day to take the tax test, mm -hmm. so we're going to take the time to do it. And you see what they have to do in eighth grade? Mm-hmm. But you're going to be fine when you go to 8th grade. I'm not even worried about you. I think she will too. Oh, yeah. Okay, so now, when I'm, I'm dividing decimals, and I have a decimal in this number, which is called the divisor, what do I need to do? Uh, you need to 
see how many times. What do I need to do with that decimal? Oh, move the decimal over and... Absolutely. And then do what to this one? Mm, move it over. Right. The same number of spaces. If I move this one two spaces, I must move this one two spaces as well. Okay. Now, let's see. We have 5,024 into 35,168 because we moved those decimals. Ooh, that's a big number. Mm -hmm. uh, what would be a, f a good cool. guess? Um... Six, fifty, no. If I look at just the five and look at just the thirty-five, what would be a good guess? Seven. Wait, seven. So let's try minute. seven, okay? So much uh, math here. I'm running out of room, aren't I? Mm -hmm. Seven times four? Twenty-eight. Okay. Seven times two? Fourteen. Plus two more? S Sixteen. Okay. Seven times zero? Zero. Plus one? One. Seven times five? Thirty-five. Aren't you glad it came out evenly? Mm-hmm. Woo, because we'd have had a lot more work to do if it had not. And these are some pretty big numbers. But you know what? On the tax test, if you have pretty big numbers, you better believe it's going to come out pretty evenly like that. They're only going to stress you so much on that test. Okay, now this is didn't have multiple choice, which means it's a free response question so now we have to put our answer in the grid so where is it going to go in the grid and it was seven what 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 kind of units were these meters uh -huh. how are we going to put this in the grid decimal seven i mean yeah seven just no because you didn't move your decimal seven. decimal seven right but seven decimal Yes. Oh, are you talking to me? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I, did, I thought you were talking to somebody else. You're absolutely right. Seven decimal. Now, why would you be talking to someone else when we're having a conversation? I, I have no idea, Taylor. I'm bubbling in seven. Absolutely. Got to bubble it in because if you're taking that test and you put the seven in the box and don't bubble it in, it's going to be counted wrong. You've got to do both. Please get in the habit of doing that. As usual, Taylor does an excellent job. Great job. Did you, were, were you getting ready to say something? Okay. No, she did a great job. She did. Thanks for calling. All right. We do have another caller. Oh, that good. was a lot of math on that problem. Yes, and it was. I was about to say my hand is hurting from writing <laughs> that, but it's really probably your hand, right? Yes, it's my hand, Jim. <laughs> we have good students who are helping us good. solve those problems. Uh, we have Christian on the line. Hello, Christian. Huh? <laughs> we kind of shocked Christian. Christian, you're on the air, honey. Oh. Christian, what school are you calling from? John B. Hood. John B. Hood. Good, good. Hey, John B. Hood, good, good. I just got a ride for Hood, okay? What grade are you in, Christian? Eight. Oh, okay. Christian, bless you, bless uh, you, bless you, Christian. Eighth grader called. Yes. Now, should I give Christian this problem? No. I mean, he. Now, Christian, you don't. <laughs> no. uh, Christian please. already said no. <laughs> don't give me that problem. <laughs> Christian knew it was a doozy if I said it like that, yeah. right? Christian knows me well. But uh, Christian, I'm seriously thinking about giving you this problem. No, that's okay. Yeah, you, you know why? Like because you you're going to see a problem like this on the tax test. And I promise you, when I give you the problem, I'm going to definitely help you work it out, okay? So can you trust me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay, good. Good deal. Okay, Christian, let's look at your problem. And you see the wow. graphics there. That's pretty heavy. The graphics is of a cone, okay? Uh -huh. And um, it gives us the dimension, and it's the dimension of the radius there. And what is the radius equal to, <coughs> Christian? Pi, uh, oh, R, R, I mean, 9 centimeters. Good, 9 centimeters, all right? And your problem goes like this. It says, if the volume of the cone is 763, 763 and 2 hundredths centimeters cube, what is the height? Okay, and before we start solving it, let's just look at the text there. It's 8.8b, uh, .8 b, and let me read that to everybody out there in TV land. 8.8b, uh, .8 it says, the student is expected to connect models to formulas for volume of prisms, cylinders, pyramids, and cones, okay? All right, Christian? Okay, okay. Christian. First, let's uh, look at our formula chart. We're trying to find the volume of a cone. Do you know that off the top of your, the formula for that off the top of your head, Christian? Yeah. Oh, you yeah. do? 
I'm glad you do because I don't know it off the top of my head. I have to look at the formula chart. But anyway, tell me about that formula, Christian. Tell me what you know about the formula. Volume equals base times height. Equals what? I'm sorry. Base my times height. Okay, one-third base times height. Is that what you said? Yes. Absolutely. The co volume, the formula for volume of a cone is one-third base, capital B, times height. Were you watching earlier when we talked about uh, what uh, that capital B stands for? No, ma'am. That capital B represents the area of the base of a solid figure. Do you know what I mean when I say the base of a solid figure? Yes, ma'am. What is a base? The base. The bottom. It's the bottom. It's what it sets on. And if I were to sit a cone down, see, here's my cone here. Can't very well set it like this, can I? No. But I can set it like this. And what shape is the air is the base of this figure? Circle. It's a circle. And in the last problem, we talked about the formula for area of a circle. Do you remember what we said that was? No. Well, we'll look again and see. So that's why I keep my formula chart with me to make sure I, I have it available at all times. Okay, I don't see it there. <laughs> I want to have it available. I'm on the wrong formula chart here. And it may be underneath your problem. I think it might be. But I, I have another one here. Here it is. Here's another one. Uh, if the area of a circle is pi times the radius squared. So in other words, I'm going to, I'm going to write that up here so we can remember. Pi times the radius squared. So for the volume of this figure, I'm going to multiply one-third times the area of the base, which is pi times the radius squared times the height of the figure. And as you're taking the tax test, when I, if I were you with my formula chart, now you can't write on that separate formula chart that they give you, but there's a formula chart inside the book that you can write on. I'm just getting everything crooked under here. But uh, what I would do is I would take that formula chart that's inside my book and I would write out, okay, the base of a prism is a rectangle, so that's length times width. The area of the base is length times width. Base of a cone is a circle, so the area is pi times radius squared. I would write those out if I were an eighth grader taking the tax test. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I would do that when I first start my test. And you can find those uh, areas on your formula chart under area. All of those figures have areas of figures that are on your formula chart. Okay? For a prism, depends on what kind of prism it is. If it's a rectangular prism, I'd look under rectangle. If it's a cylinder, I'd look under circle. If it's a pyramid, depending on what kind, it could be triangular, I'd look under triangle. Could be rectangular, I'd look under rectangle, and so on and so forth. You understand what I'm saying? I would do that at the beginning of that test so that when I came to a formula with, for volume and I ran into that capital B, I wouldn't have any problems. I would just write it out to the side. Okay, the uh, base of a cone is a circle, so the volume is one-third instead of capital B. I'm going to fill in pi times radius squared times height. I would write it right there on the formula chart in the book. Can't write on that separate formula chart because then they're trying to, what they'll say is, oh, teacher could have wrote that. We don't want them to think anything like that. We know the teacher didn't write it, but we want to make sure they don't think that. Okay? So, we have the formula for volume of a cone. And I'm going to tell you, I gave you a doozy here. All right? But I know you can work it out. Now, let's fill in the numbers that we know. Let me zoom that out a little bit. We know the volume. What did we say the volume was? Seven, 763. 763.02. Oh. Okay. We're going to bring down that one-third. What do we use for pi? Uh, 3.14. Okay. And we could use the fraction. I just realized that. Yes. Hmm. We could, you, you know what, let's use the fraction, since we have a fraction here. Um, on second thought, you know what, I'm not going to use the fraction. I'm going to leave it at 3.14, and I'll tell you why in a second. And what is the radius? Nine centimeters. Okay, and we have to square that, and then the height is what we're trying to find, okay? Now, what's the first thing, and this is a pretty long problem, what's the first thing we need to do? Square nine. Square that nine. Order of operations tells us we do uh, exponents first. Okay, so I'm going to bring down that 3.14, and I'm going to bring down that one-third, and my volume. 
Now, the reason I said I can leave it 3.14 is because I can actually multiply the one-third times 81 first because multiplication is commutative, which means it doesn't matter what order I multiply. So I can come out here and say one-third times 81, which is the same as 81 over 1. Do you know how to cancel? Yes. Okay, and I can reduce both of these by what number? Three. Three. How many times does three go into three? One. Do you know how many times three goes into 81? No. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and tell you just for time's sake, it goes 27 times, okay? Three times 27 is 81, okay? One times 27? 27. And one times one? One. So that's the same as 27, right? So now I have 763 and 200 equals 27 times 3.14 times the height. Now, next I'm going to do what? 3.14 times 27. Okay, we're going to come out here. And I tell you, the eighth graders, y'all have a job to do. And that's why you need to make sure you're doing a good job coming to uh, watch the show every week. Uh, make sure you go to tutoring because y'all have a lot of work to do. Seven times four? 24. No, 28. Okay, seven times one? One, I mean seven. Plus two more? Nine. Seven times three? 21. Then I'm going to annex that zero. Two times four? Eight. Two times one? Two. Two times three? Six. And then I'm going to add eight plus zero? Eight. Nine plus eight? Seventeen. Okay, and then one plus one? Two. Plus two more? Four. And two plus six? Eight. Okay, then we have to put the decimal. Where's the decimal going to go? Between the four and seven. Okay. He's pretty sharp. Okay, we have 763 and 2 hundredths equals 84 and 78 hundredths times the height. We have one more thing to do. Boy, it seems like we're not going to ever finish this problem, doesn't it? But you know what? This is the kind of thing you're going to have to do on the tax test. The last thing we do, how do we figure out what this H is equal to? Mm. Go back. Oh. Okay. I'm going to rewrite it here. I'm pretty sure that's what you were saying. And what do we have to do now? Divide. We have to divide, and we divide both sides by what number? By two. By, by what number? By 84. 84 and 78 hundredths. In other words, I'm going to divide by the same th thing that they multiplied. They're multiplying, they're saying 84 and 78 uh, hundredths times what again? number equals 763 and 2 hundredths. So I'm going to divide by that because division is the opposite of multiplication, okay? So I'm going to divide both sides because, see, that cancels here. And that leaves me with my H. And I want to find out what H is equal to. That's what my goal is. So then over here, I have 84 and 78 hundredths divided into 763 and 2 hundredths. Of course, once again, we already said we move those decimal points, same number of spaces. Now, let's, I don't know about you, I don't know off the top of my head what that's equal to, but let's have a good guess here. What would be a good guess? Just looking at the 8 and looking at the 76, what would be a good first guess? And then I can look at my choices too and decide a good first guess. Mm -hmm. Nine. Nine is a very good first guess. Let's try that. 84 and 7,800. 800, I mean, 8,478. I'll put it right here. I'm running out of room. It's so much work. Nine times eight? Seven, two. Nine times seven? Sixty-three. Plus seven more? Sixty, uh, seven. Okay. Nine times four? Thirty-six. Plus seven? Forty-one. Forty what? Three. Forty-three. Okay. And nine times eight? 72. Plus four more? 76. Ah, thank God it came out even again. Woo, these are some doozies of a Correct. number, right? Boy wonder. And so what's my answer? Here are my choices Nine. here. Okay, excellent. And see, you thought you couldn't do that. Excellent job. Excellent job. What do I win?
<laughs> we have to pull a number. It's it's a it's a random drawing. We don't pull the number. The people in the booth pull the number. But stay tuned. You might. You may yeah, win. You Who may. knows? It's random. Who knows? Great job, and you know I like the way that he hung in there. Yes, he did. Problems take a long, oh yeah, drawn out period of time. Oh yeah. Well, let's take a short break and hear about an upcoming program wow. called School Zone Dallas. This program is produced by DSTV and hosted by students. Wow. Let's take a look. Think you know DISD? See what the students see. After school ballet, job shadowing experiences, and individual students who inspire. She's the typical teenage girl. Watch the Emmy Award winning show School Zone Dallas, hosted by DISD students. January 25th at 6.30, here on Channel 8, The Spirit of Texas. Brought to you by John Eagle Dealerships. Okay, welcome back. <laughs> Let's work out our next problem. Then. Okay. And that was a nice commercial. Yes, it was. <laughs> okay. Um, do we have a caller, Jim? Well, I don't think we have a caller uh, yet, but uh, we want to encourage you to give us a call. And while we're waiting for a caller, let me talk about something. Okay. Uh, one of the things you have to do in eighth grade in particular, but uh, a little bit in seventh grade. In seventh grade, you have to find a uh, surface area with nets. And so let's talk a little bit about what some of those nets look like of some of the figures. Okay. If we can go to the Elmo. If we can go to the Elmo. Well, I could always put it in my hand. It wouldn't work. As okay. Oh, that's much better. Okay. Now, if we have a triangular prism, for example, and, and go ahead and call. You know, as soon as someone calls in, we'll switch back. But if we have a triangular prism, and this is a triangular prism, I mean, I'm sorry, pyramid. I'm on the wrong thing. Let me find that pyramid. I picked up the wrong figure. If we have a tri triangular pyramid, okay. and, the, and by the way, you name pyramids and prisms by their base. And in this figure, the base is a triangle, so that's why it's called a triangular pyramid, okay? If I were to take this pyramid and cut it open, and lay it out, this is the way it would look. And you can see it has the one, uh, the base triangle, and then we have three triangles uh, that fold up and to make, to make this uh, triangular pyramid. A square pyramid, which I don't have an example of that, uh, I hate that, but if I were to open that up, mm -hmm. it would look like this. But I think we do have a caller. We do have a caller. We have Lewis on the line. Okay, good. Lewis got tired of waiting, Jim. Okay. Okay, we do have another caller. We have Andy. Andy? Andy's tired of us too now. <laughs> Hello, Andy? Lewis? Okay, we do have another caller. We're losing them left and right, Jim. Oh, we just lost Darius. What's going on, guys? Thank God we have a lot of people waiting yes. on the phone. This is our fourth caller, Diana from JL Long. Hello. Hello, Diana. Hello, how are you? See, those guys got tired. That's women. We, we can hang in there, can't we, Diana? Yes. <laughs> Hello? You hear me? Yes, I sure do. No, but I'm not Diana. Okay, oh. wait a minute. Guys, come on. What's going on? Yeah. Hello, is Diana gone now? Huh? Who is this? This is Darius. This is Darius. Okay. okay. Darius. Okay. Okay. We had Diana a second ago. Diana, hang on. We'll come to you after yes. we finish with okay. Darius. Darius was a little offended because I was talking about women. Okay. okay. Right, Darius. Darius no. was like, Oh no, I'm not. I'm not Diana. I'm Darius. Okay, Darius. Let's see. Just a confusion with this. Yes, a little, there. little bit of confusion mm -hmm. there. I think they're trying what to. Where are you in, Darius? Hello, yeah. Darius. Hello. What grade are you in? Seventh. Seventh. And seventh calling grade. From Brown. Yes. Okay. 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 Here are my seventh grade problems. Okay. Oh. All right, Darius. Let's look at your problem. And it says the perimeter of a square pool is 40 meters. What is the area of the square pool? And earlier we talked about. Uh, text 7.9 which is measurement remember Darius yeah. earlier in the show okay and if you notice there you see your graphics and there's the pool there and it's giving us the perimeter and that perimeter is equal to what huh? uh, 40 40 meters okay great mm -hmm. now they want us to find the area Darius and all they give us is the perimeter now how in the world 
can we find the area of something if all we know is the perimeter? First, let's look at a formula. We're, we're trying to find area, so let's look at the formula for area of a square because that pool is in the shape of a square, okay? Uh -huh. So I'm going to go to my formula chart, and I tell you, I uh, keep that formula chart with me. Uh-huh. I really do because I, anytime, okay, I said that now I can't find the formula. Did I put it under here? I think it may be underneath. I think it might be underneath. Uh, okay, it's not underneath, Jim. I have that formula chart here. Area of a trapezoid circle. Okay, it's here. It's here. It's the next page. Mm -hmm. I looked over. Right on, if it had been, okay, that's not square though. Here it is. There. I knew I had it. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Okay, he's about to go to sleep. He's getting tired of me now. Okay, here's the formula for area of a square. And what does it say the formula for area of a square is? A equals S square. Oh. S2. That's right, S squared. You had it right the first time. In other words, side times side. Another way of saying that mm -hmm. would be side times side. Now, but the problem is, let me go ahead and write the formula. Area equals S squared. Mm -hmm. The problem is, I don't know what the measure of the sides are. Mm -hmm. How in the world can I figure out the measure of the sides when all they gave me was a perimeter? Let's uh, talk about what we know about a square. Tell me something you know about a square. It has four sides. Okay, mm -hmm. that's true. Very good. Uh, let me see. Uh, let me think. All sides are equal. All okay. sides are equal. That's that might help point. us. Mm -hmm. Four sides and all sides equal. So four equal sides. Mm -hmm. And all we know is the perimeter. So how can we figure out the measure of a side? Uh... In, in, other, in other words, I have one, two, three, four sides, uh -huh. and if I add those together, because that's what perimeter means, right? Forty, four divided by forty. Forty. Uh, uh, forty divided by forty. All uh, right, I knew that's what you meant. Forty divided by four, and what is forty divided by four? Can you do that in your head? Well. Let's, Let's go ahead and divide the 4 into 40. Okay? Ten. How many times does 4 go into 40? Oh, did you know the answer already? Yeah, that's Oh, you, I'm too slow for you, aren't I? Okay, 10. So in other words, you're telling me that one side is equal oh, to 10. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yes. 10 meters. But in order to find the area, I need a side times a side. What's the, how am I going to figure out the other side? For, uh, 40 times 10. No. Don't listen to them. Pay attention to what I'm saying. See, somebody's trying to steer you wrong there. Because uh, I can hear them in the background, but I know you know what I'm talking about. Uh, in other words, I, in order to find, it says I need to multiply side times side, because that's what S squared means. Mm -hmm. I have one number here, so I can say 10. How am I going to know what the other number is that I'm going to multiply? Uh, uh, we're losing him. What's the other number? In other words, what's the length of this side going to be? 10. Oh, okay, okay. You said that like I should have known. Tell me why I should have known that. Because all sides are equal. Absolutely. You already told me that once, didn't you? Mm -hmm. I must not have been paying attention. Ten times ten is what? A hundred. Okay. I wonder if my answer is here somewhere. Hmm. See? Absolutely. Yeah, so next time, listen to me. See, they're telling you stuff in the background. You know the answer to this. You don't have to listen to them. Okay. I know I don't. Okay. All Good right. Job, dear Good job, Excellent job. Mm -hmm. Excellent job. But I'm not trying to say don't listen to your teachers, but somebody else was talking about something else and you were listening to what they were saying. Mm -hmm. And they were talking about referring to something different from what we were talking about. Okay. Okay? Because you definitely Thank listen you to it. your teachers now, Darius. Mm -hmm. Okay? And they're doing All a right. great job there. Excellent well, job. We want to encourage you to call in. We are still, the lines are open. Okay. Right. Now, we were talking about the, uh, oh, we. Okay, we got some of our callers. You know, we lost a couple of callers. We yes. had some, some casualties a second ago. But we got Andy back. Hello, Andy. Bueno. Hello. <laughs> Andy said it was magic. Da -da. Okay. Andy, uh, and what school are you calling from? Griner. Griner. W.E. Griner, no school oh, finer. Right what grade are you in, Andy? Seven. Seventh grade. Right Andy's called okay. before, I believe. I think so. Okay. You have. You have. Okay. Yeah. Andy, you know what? I'm getting ready to give you a doozy. A doozy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> w. Griner, no school finer. You should know the answer yeah. to this. <laughs> you said that's funny. Okay, Andy, this is your problem. It says, what is the area of a triangle that connects the points? Uh, and your first point is 
one, one. Your second point is five, one. And your third point is three, seven. And those are also called ordered pairs, okay? Okay. And it says, uh, what is the area of a triangle that connects these points on a con uh, coordinated grid, or coordinate grid, excuse me. <laughs> wow, <laughs> he that's wants pretty that heavy. He wants to be coordinated, okay. okay, but it's a coordinate grid. And this is also part of measurement, Andy, and so we did talk Absolutely. about the text 7.9, okay? Okay. And I'm going right. to zoom this grid in a little bit for you, okay. so you can see the numbers on there. I'm going to rewrite the points we're looking for. Okay. Now, I'm going to tell you, Andy, when they put this question on the tax test, they're not going to have a grid there for you. But I went ahead and put a grid on there today so that we, because you and I already know how to do it, right? Yes. But we need to show the rest of America. Actually, it's just yes. the rest of DISD. <laughs> but we're going to pretend like it's, it's a national program. Uh, we need to show the rest of America how to do this problem. <laughs> okay, how about that? Now, what's the first thing? And this is my origin right here, in case you can't really see my numbers very good on there. Can you see the numbers well enough? On yes. the grid. Oh, good. Okay. What's the first thing I need to do, Andy? Plot the points. I need to plot those points. Absolutely. I knew Andy would know <laughs> to tell me. Okay. Now, help me plot. One, one. How do I plot that point? Uh, That's my, my origin there. That's yeah, your origin. Okay. What does the first number tell me to go do? Uh, go up or down or across? Right. It tells me to go right. Why am I going right and not left? Because positive. Because it's a positive number. So I'm starting at zero, and I see Andy wasn't listening. I heard somebody back there say negative. Andy's listening to me, because me and Andy, we're here. We already know what this is, but we're going to take our time for the other folks. Right, Andy? Yes, you do. So we go across to one, to the right, because it's positive. And then that second number tells me to go where? Up. Up, because it's what? One. It's positive also. So I'm going to put one dot there. Okay? Thank you. Okay. Now, what about the second number? Uh, to the right. I'm going to go to the right to five and then do what? Up one. Up to one and I'm going to put a dot there. And then the third number tells me to do what? To the right. To the right to three and then up, do, uh, <laughs> I just gave it away, up to seven. seven. Okay. <laughs> then I'm going to connect Whoa. my dots. Now, I want this to look real cute, so I'm going to use my ruler. Okay. Okay. So you need Neatness counts. You Neatness know. counts. Yes. Now, unfortunately, y'all won't have a ruler on the test. Actually, you will. I take that back. You'll have a ruler on your formula chart. Mm -hmm. So you can use your ruler. Oh, wow. You look pretty and, good. Uh, and I use the ruler, and it still <laughs> looks kind of, it is kind of ugly. I don't blame you for laughing, uh, Andy. <laughs> I really don't blame you at all for laughing, but I did the best I could, Andy. What can I say? Now, we want to find <laughs> the area of this thing. Okay. This is a triangle. Oh, got to pull out that formula chart. What is the formula for area of a triangle? That's area there. A equals one uh, half, yeah, half base, same side. Or? Area equals base height over divided two. Divided by two. Yeah. Now, which one do you like? You want to use the one with the one half or the one with the divided by two? One half. The one half. Okay. You know, I love it when they say that. Yes. Most students are scared of fractions, but boy, those grinder students, they'll tackle those fractions every time. That's right. Now, so it's area equals one half times the base times the height. Now, in this mm -hmm. uh, triangle, what is the length of my base? Uh, Remember that these squares five. are each one unit. So four. I started here. At, okay, uh, you caught yourself there, didn't you? Okay, so it's four. And what is the height of my triangle? Seven. Are you sure? Six, 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 six. 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 <coughs> ah, okay. Now, what you uh, when you corrected yourself, I'm sure you noticed something, mm -hmm. and that's what's going to help you know how to do this without the grid. Now, when you corrected yourself, it's because you noticed, oh, wait a minute, this didn't start at zero, it started at one, so it wouldn't be six, it would be only Five. seven. Oh. I mean, I mean, this wouldn't be seven, it would be only six, I said it wrong. It would be only Whoa. six, because we don't count this one under here. So it would be only one, two, three, four, five, six. Even though my triangle's ugly, it's still yeah. six, okay? Yeah, it's so it's six. Same thing with the base. It would be one, two, three, four. So if I were uh, 
trying to figure it out without the grid and I knew that I had that middle number going up to seven but I have to remember and even if you don't have the grid you know what you can draw a grid you can just kind of sketch a grid mm -hmm. and just kind of uh, sketch those numbers that's an ugly little sketch but you know y'all's <laughs> gonna yours gonna be ugly too because you won't have a ruler and you won't have a grid okay why well, you're laughing I see you're laughing at me Andy okay <laughs> okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, you know, you can kind of sketch it even if you don't have a grid. And then you can count. Or you can think about, well, it's going from one to seven, so that's six. And it's going from one to five, so that's four. Okay? I looked at my uh, Y's to get my height because your height goes up. And I looked at my X's to get my base because your base goes across. I knew that this was, these were the two at the bottom because they had a one. You okay. know, you went across the one, up to something, across the five, up, I mean, you went across the one, up to the one, went across the five, up to another one. So I knew that would be my base. And I'd have to visualize that if I didn't have the grid. But I wanted to show you with the grid so that would help you when you're doing this problem without the grid to figure out some ways, some things you could do. But let's go back to the problem. Uh, okay. I'm going to come out here since I drew right in the middle of my path here. What's four times four? Four times four? I mean four, four times, times six. six. Okay. Andy thinks I'm crazy. <laughs> Twenty-four. Okay, Andy said, boy, they look crazy lady doesn't know a six from a four. Okay, and then one half times twenty-four. That's a, the same way of saying one half of twenty-four. Okay. What's one half, what's half of twenty-four? Twelve. Twelve. So my area is 12. 12, and this it doesn't tell us what the units are. When it doesn't tell us what the units are, you know what we do? We say square units. Square units? Mm -hmm. Square units. It when it doesn't area. say inches or uh, centimeters, we say square units. And the reason we say square, because, like Jimmy said, is because it's area. Now, of course, when we don't have multiple choice, that means it's what kind of problem? Um... Free response. Free response. And what do we do with the free response problems? Bubble. We bubble in. Bubble. Tell me how to bubble this in. Put the... With the numbers 12. Where am I going to put that 12? On top. Up here? Where? Oh, over here? No. In front... Oh. No. Oh, right. Oh. 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 Okay. In front where? of the decimal. Oh, right in front of the decimal. You mean like here? Absolutely right. And then, of course, we have to bubble. Did we lose Andy? I think we I lost Andy. Did. I thought I heard him. Great <laughs> job. Yeah, he did. but he was getting ready to say bubble. Mm -hmm. He did say bubble in. Okay. okay. Thanks a lot, Ken. Uh, Absolutely. Andy. Thank you, Andy. Good did a G wonderful job. Even though we lost you. Do, and have I wonder, a, do we, we have time another? for another call? We I do. Okay. I believe that's all. I'm so sorry that we didn't get to, to uh, Greg or to Lewis. Greg and Lewis, we lost them earlier, didn't we? But call back in next week. But that's just about all the time we have today. But before we go, we have to do what, Jimmy? Uh, let's see, give away the fun and educational prizes, oh, maybe? Oh, good. So mm -hmm. who's the lucky person? Well, the lucky caller is number... Diana from JL Law Middle School. Wow. Wonderful. Congratulations. E Remember, we'd love to see you, so don't forget to bring pictures to your teacher so she can send them to us. Our email address is calculatethis at dallasisd.org, or you can also send them through interdepartmental mail to DISD Box 379. Thank you for joining us today on Calculate This, and we'll see you next Tuesday, same time, same place on Calculate, Calculate This. this. Bye. Bye. Calculate this. It's been a pleasure bringing it to you. And as a quick reminder, don't forget to send in photos of yourself and your class. We love to be able to show your face on television.
Either mail it to us through interdepartmental mail at DISD Box 379 or drop us a line at calculate this at DallasISD.org. And if you'd like to find out more about the show, check out our website at www.dallasisd.org slash calculate this. For all of us here at Dallas Schools Television, I'm Daryl, and we'll see you next time on Calculate This. See you then.